Mariners lose five to four. They fall to 45 and 45 on the season. They lose the first of a three game series against the Detroit Tigers. Talk about how it happened. First inning, Kerry Carpenter hits a home run off Luis Castillo with Spencer Torkelson on base to make it two nothing. Fifth inning, Akil Badu homers to right center to make it three nothing. Mariners get two back with the bases loaded. Dylan Moore doubles to score a Eugenio Suarez and Tom Murphy. Uh, we'll talk about that inning in a second. Seventh inning, Nick Maton, or is it Phil Maton? It's one of the Matons, homers to center. Javi Baez scores to make it 5-2. In the eighth inning, Kelnick doubles to center to score Julio Rodriguez from first base. Close play there, but I think they got the call right. Kelnick goes to third on the throw to make it 5-3. Mariners get one to make it 5-4. Not enough. This was extremely frustrating, folks. This was not the fun way to come back from the break because a lot of reasons. It was just such a frustrating game. Such a frust- such a good game. If you were a neutral party, this was a really good baseball game. And it was an okay baseball game. There was a lot of times where nothing happened from the second to the fifth. Nothing. <sighs> this was frustrating. Well, let's talk about some positives. Um... Julio gets on three times. He's robbed of a homer, so he should have gotten on three times. Um, Looked like he got hurt on that play at the plate. And I'm wondering if that's why he didn't swing at that pitch at the end of the game. So with runners on first and second, I mean, this is the negative. Julio strikes out with a chance to tie the game or win the game. And it was an okay pitch. Like it was a slider, but it breaks right into Julio's power zone too. And I'm wondering, and it has come out now that service is going to have Rodriguez checked out to make sure he's okay. Talk about a player you can't lose. Like, no, his numbers aren't where they were last year. But his importance on defense and with his base running, the fact he's played a lot better since, I mean, this guy was hitting 200 not that long ago. This would be a major loss. So here's hoping that that's all okay. I thought Luis Castillo pitched okay. He really only made two mistakes. Gives up the two-run homer to Kerry Carpenter. And then he gives up the solo homer to Badu, and everything in between was fine. But it's the Detroit Tigers. I have higher expectations for Luis Castillo than this. Is it fair? I just try to not ask myself these questions so often, but maybe it's not fair. But five innings of three-run baseball aren't what we're signing up for Luis Castillo for. And that's a compliment to him rather than an insult to what happened today. Uh, Any other pause? Oh, Kelnick, really nice pinch hit. uh, Drives the baseball and and a bat that did not look to be going particularly well, if I'm being honest with you but does drive that baseball to the opposite field. Um, I want Kelnick in the lineup every day. I know that he struggled a lot lately. I know that Dylan Moore has a uh, career now of being very good against left-handed pitching. And he, you know, give him more credit. He does have the two-run double. Just missed a grand slam. And he gets on via walk in the ninth as well. But I want Jared Kelnick in the lineup every day. Ty Adcock gives up the two-run homer. Um, Only one of those runs earned because of an error by Moore. I think Dylan Moore's defensive reputation is based on him being fast. He's not a good defensive player. He's not particularly good anywhere. He's not bad anywhere. And he can play a bunch of positions. But he's not great anywhere by any stretch of the imagination. He's competent a few places. But ideally, ideally, he's, I don't know what position is best for Dylan Moore. Third base, maybe where I'd put him most. I don't know. But he's not a great outfielder. 
He's not a great outfielder. He's not a good shortstop. He's not a great second baseman. Third or second are his best positions, but I think his reputation is based on, oh, he's fast, so he must be good at defense. No, that's not how that works. Of course, Dylan Moore moves over to first base in this game, and the reason Kel McPinch hit and was in the game is because Ty France gets ejected for arguing strikes. Look, some people are going to be arguing protect the plate, protect the plate. You've got to protect the plate in that situation. Okay. It's not a strike. It's not a strike, and it's another awful job by a home plate umpire. I'm tired of this, folks. I'm so exhausted having to talk about umpires when there's a perfectly good solution on the way. Not on the way. Available. I'm tired of it. And I'm also tired of the Mariners' <laughs> offense looking inept in early innings. J.P. Crawford struggled. Ty France, you know, the strikeout should have been both whatever it was, but does not have a good game. Teoscar Hernandez was awful tonight. Uh, Tom Murphy wasn't very good. It's worth pointing out Cal Rally pinch hits for him. Okay, I wanted to talk about this too. I like the decision to pinch hit Rally there, and he had a line drive right at the right fielder. Although it was a pitch he probably should have hit out the park. Alex Lang was terrible tonight. Terrible. Mariner should have scored a couple of runs. Um, I like that decision. I love the decision for Mike Ford to pinch hit for Pollock, of course, because, hey, AJ Pollock stinks. Does have a hit tonight. Congratulations, buddy. You've almost got your OPS into uh, the 550s. Almost. Good for you, bud. That's nothing personal with you, AJ Pollock. I'm sorry. That was mean. It's just so frustrating to watch him stink. He should not be on the roster. And I did not love the decision of Colton Wong pitch hitting there for Jose Caballero, who, look, played a bad game today. 0 for 3. I thought... He probably should have made that play on the Spencer Torkelson hit. Get him out of the inning. It would have been a good play. I want people to make good plays. Defense is not just making plays that are made in front of you, folks. You're supposed to take away hits. And the Mariners infield just doesn't do it very often, with the exception that Eugenio Suarez has been really good this year defensively. But another bad game for him offensively, too. 0 for 3. Scores to run with the walk, but it's looking 373 at the 90 game point. Goodness gracious. Oh, this was a frustrating one. A bummer, too, because you had... It's just one game. If they win the next two, I'll probably forget all about this. If you take two of three, you're doing your job. You looked so good at the end of the first half, and then you come out and you basically lay an egg tonight. Some bad luck. A couple of bad calls. Um, a couple of mediocre Castillo pitches that he's two pitches away from throwing five innings of shutout baseball, maybe even getting to six innings. He wasn't incredibly efficient tonight, so I don't know. But you were so close to even laying an egg, picking up this W. But you didn't really earn it either. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, I'll be okay. But frustrating. It's frustrating. And, and these are the type of losses that when you're in the position the Mariners are in, it can't happen. It will happen. But it shouldn't. But it will. And we'll be here to talk about them all year. Main takeaway, I really hope Julio's okay. Because, I mean, there's no arguing that he's your most important player. None. You can argue that Crawford was the MVP of the first half. And you can argue that he's an awfully important player, too. Because 
Nobody's get on getting on base like him, and it's not even close. It's the only person that's remotely close is Caballero in a, a smaller sample. So, but in at the top of the lineup, I think you can argue that he's the second most irreplaceable player, especially when you consider how little depth they have. But they don't have exactly a lot of depth behind Julio either. I didn't like this one. This was not fun. And two, to come out like this too, I mean, I know. The All-Star break's the same for everybody else, but like to have all those festivities, to have everybody talking about this city and stuff and to just lay an egg against a bad baseball team. Detroit is bad. It's just really disappointing. That's happened too much this year. 72 games to go. Time to right the ship. Um, by the way, since I'm watching it, like, as you see me look up, I'm watching the replay. I don't know why I'm watching the replay, but I am. Um, Eduardo Rodriguez was good tonight. He's a good pitcher. He is someone that I think, if he's healthy, is going to get the Tigers a very hefty return. Not, well, uh, hefty is probably too strong a word. Anyway, he was good tonight. I'll give him some credit. And Detroit's pitching isn't why they stink. But giving up five tonight to that lineup and then only scoring the four. I don't know. I'm frustrated. I was really looking forward to a strong start to the second half. And at least in game one, not so much. Um... Please hit like, please hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Crawford underscore M-I-L-B. I'm realizing I have to use that stupid website more just because that's where that's where the people are. Can't ignore. Well, it says there's 13,300 of you. It's probably more like 8,000 and 5,000 robots at this point, but whatever. You see when I look up there, it's because I don't love talking about myself. It's... uh. That's a flaw. Uh, Sports Sometimes podcast, Rotowire Fantasy Baseball podcast. Have a live episode tomorrow at 1030 Pacific with my buddy Ryan Boyer. We'll do the same thing on Sunday. Um, so follow all that stuff, please. And most importantly, hit like and subscribe. And let me know if you're as frustrated from this game as I am. Because whew, that was 